Hugh fever was first described in 1935 by Edward Holbrook Derrick among abattoir workers in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. The Q in Q fever stands for query because the cause of the disease was unknown at the time of its initial observation. It was later determined that the causative agent is Coxiella burnetti, a bacterium. Q fever infection primarily occurs through inhalation, which is the most common route of transmission. Individuals can become infected by breathing in aerosols or dust that are contaminated with Coxiella burnetti, the bacteria responsible for Q fever. This bacterium is often found in the birth products, urine, feces, and milk of infected animals such as goats, sheep, and cattle. Environments where these animals are kept or processed, including farms and slaughterhouses, are particularly high-risk areas. Inhalation of contaminated air is not the only means of contracting Q fever. Direct contact with infected animals or their byproducts can also lead to infection. This includes handling animals during birthing or slaughtering processes, as well as contact with their wool, tissue, and waste products. Individuals working in veterinary fields or involved in animal husbandry are particularly at risk. Tick bites are another, albeit less common, route of transmission. Ticks can carry the Coxiella burnetti bacterium and transmit it to humans through a bite. However, this mode of transmission is not as prevalent as inhalation or direct contact. Finally, the consumption of unpasteurized milk and dairy products from infected animals can result in infection. This route of transmission, like that of tick bites, is relatively rare compared to inhalation and direct contact. It's important to note that Q fever is not typically transmitted from person to person. The bacterium's resilience allows it to survive in the environment for extended periods, posing a risk even in the absence of direct animal contact. This makes Q fever a concern in agricultural and animal-related industries. Q fever, resulting from an infection with the bacterium Coxiella burnetti, can manifest a range of flu-like symptoms, though some individuals may not exhibit any signs at all. Typically, symptoms appear two to three weeks after exposure. The most common symptom is a high fever, often accompanied by chills, signaling the body's response to the infection. Many individuals also experience a severe headache, which can be particularly debilitating. In addition to these symptoms, fatigue is common, characterized by a general feeling of tiredness and lack of energy. Muscle pain is another frequent symptom, varying in intensity from mild to severe. Respiratory symptoms may include a dry, non-productive cough. Some individuals might also experience gastrointestinal symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. In more severe cases, especially if the infection has spread to the lungs, symptoms can escalate to include chest pain and shortness of breath. Although less common, rashes may develop in some cases. While most cases of Q fever are acute and resolve with appropriate treatment, the infection can occasionally lead to more serious complications like pneumonia or hepatitis. A rare but more severe form, chronic Q fever, can develop months or years after the initial infection potentially causing significant health issues like endocarditis, an infection of the heart valves. Chronic Q fever is more likely in individuals with pre-existing health conditions or weakened immune systems. Therefore, prompt and accurate diagnosis followed by appropriate treatment is crucial, particularly for those at risk of chronic Q fever. Treating Q fever effectively involves a tailored approach based on the severity and form of the disease. The primary treatment for acute Q fever is the antibiotic doxycycline, which is usually prescribed as soon as the diagnosis is suspected. Starting treatment early, even before laboratory confirmation, is crucial as it significantly reduces symptoms and prevents the progression to chronic Q fever. The typical course of doxycycline for acute Q fever lasts about 2-3 weeks. In cases where Q fever becomes chronic, which is less common but more serious, the treatment regimen is more complex. Chronic Q fever often requires a combination of antibiotics, commonly doxycycline coupled with hydroxychloroquine, administered over a much longer period. This extended treatment, which can last from several months up to a few years, is necessary to completely eradicate the bacteria, especially in severe cases like endocarditis, an infection of the heart valves. Supportive care is also an important aspect of treating Q fever. 
This includes managing symptoms such as fever and muscle pain, typically through over-the-counter pain relievers and fever reducers. Regular follow-up and monitoring play a crucial role, particularly for chronic Q fever patients or those with pre-existing health conditions. This ongoing monitoring is essential to assess the effectiveness of the treatment and to watch for any potential side effects due to long-term antibiotic use. Additionally, preventive measures are vital, especially for individuals at high risk of exposure, like those working in farming, veterinary, or animal processing industries. Such measures include proper handling and disposal of animal products, wearing protective clothing, and maintaining good hygiene practices. Overall, the key to effectively managing Q fever lies in early diagnosis and adherence to the prescribed treatment plan, with particular attention to completing the full course of antibiotics to ensure the infection is thoroughly treated.